Hey everybody, Norm from Tessie here at New York Comic Con 2018 in the booth of Jason Edmiston. Jason, how are you doing? Good, thank you. Thank you, Norm. Jason, you, we've seen you not just at New York Comic Con, but at shows like Monster Palooza, yep. Designer Con, and, and you go to things like Mondo Con. Your Dude. art just appeals. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much. Um, I like to make the art that I like, so I, I'm glad that it appeals to other people. We've seen a lot of, in terms of pop art, uh, yeah. digital artists working with screen printing, uh, and like great vector stuff, but yeah. you are, you're, you're, you paint. Yeah, I, I'm a little older than the um, a lot of the artists in the scenes, and kind of maybe just slightly older than, you know, most of the artists are around in their 30s, and I'm 45, so when I went to school, I was a little bit, early for all the the digital wave of illustration so I was still taught in the traditional methods so I'm kind of on the cusp between I'm half traditional half digital and some of the things that we think you're known for are these sort of portraits of iconic pop culture characters right, specifically right. their faces and of course their eyes you have a whole line of just painting the eyes of characters. Yeah, I started this series in 2015 at Mondo Gallery. I wanted to do a series of uh, pop culture portraits and I wanted to tie them all together and rather than just, you know, here's a portrait and here's a landscape and here's a, you know, a close up or whatever, I wanted to have them all have the same beat mm -hmm. uh, visibly. Mm -hmm. So I thought, how could I do, make a series of something like that? And I, a light bulb went off in my head one day. I was driving and I saw my reflection in a rear view mirror. Oh. And I thought that the crop was very interesting and also kind of photographic, uh, yeah. uh, cinematic. Uh, you see that shot a lot in... It's a very pulpy. Sure, very pulpy. And you see it a lot in Kubrick movies or whatever, that close-up of the eyes. Yes. And I thought I could probably do a series of pop culture characters from movies and music and television and video games and stuff like that and just focus on the thing that's the most engaging. Yes. of that character. The colors you use also are, are, are vibrant. Like, yes, yes. Like, when you paint, do you paint with a certain lighting scheme in mind or certain setting in mind? I like, yeah, I like the high contrast um, saturated colors already. I was raised on, you know, the monster art of Basil Gogos and, and the Hildebrandt brothers, known famous for their Star Wars, mm -hmm, uh, the famous mm -hmm, Star yep. Wars movie poster or the Tolkien calendars. So I lean towards that way anyway. So when I... When I plan a painting, I like to have a variety of, of some dramatic lighting. So I play around a lot with different lighting sources or maybe some bounce lighting from behind. So you go warm light from the front and maybe like a blue light from behind or some green bounce light that lights up half the face just to give it some variety and some some real punch to the images. And in terms of lighting, the, the pigments you're using also have reflectivity. So when you're digitizing these, how do you maintain fidelity? The acrylics are, um, are really bright and vibrant. And luckily my scanner picks up a lot of that and I'm able to color correct these paintings myself. So I'm matching them right to the original paintings. Uh. And then when I print them out, I have another artist who's very well known and knows my art very well too. So he's able to match the saturation and and everything quite well when he prints my work. So everything tends to keep that same vibrancy. You, and you told me you paint the originals here at different scales, not all this size. Right, because... they're all the same ratio, but they are painted one-to-one -one scale. So humans are all painted this scale, literally one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. And then monsters might be this big, depending on their heads are on bigger. On a big sheet of wood. Yeah, and I did, I've also done super large ones like a King Kong that would be eight feet wide. I, and I did at my last gallery show, Eyes Without a Face, uh, part two, was a 22 foot wide Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. It took up the entire gallery wall. Wow. It was eight and a half feet tall. Now in terms of monsters, and maybe uh, a monster with a face but no eyes, you have, well you do see the eyes on the Jaws poster. Tell me about this collaboration because this yeah. is the original Jaws poster. It is, the original Jaws poster and the original art from which that poster was based on. We um, contacted Roger Castell, the original artist for this poster, and we were able to acquire a scan of the original art, although that painting has been lost. Somehow yes. it, it got stolen or lost somehow. Yes. missing. So Mondo, the company that I work for regularly, wanted to do a screen printed poster based on that. And if for those not in the know, screen printed posters, instead of like lithography, um, where the inks kind of are all mixed and come on the paper all at once. Screen printed posters print one color at a time and it's just a, a kind of a very collectible way of, of, of 
creating and collecting posters sure. that has become popular lately and in this in the movie poster collecting scene so they wanted to create a recreation of this famous litho poster as a screen print yes but it's a flat painting so they needed to get somebody like myself that understands how screen prints are made to kind of reverse engineer it and pull apart that painting into separate color layers yes. in order to reprint it in that manner. It's kind of a technical that thing. That don't exactly overlap, that complement each other. Right. Where you have, how many, how many colors is this? This is nine colors. Nine colors. Uh, yeah, and I believe 10 because they added uh, an extra red for this movie poster. Normally uh, a screen print like this would take many more colors because most screen printing is done with flat colors laid on top of each other, like, a com like an old school comic book. Yeah. But this one, a lot of them are transparent colors, and we've worked with one of the best uh, screen printing companies in the world, uh, DL Screen Printing out of um, Seattle. And together, we were able to use a lot of transparencies and have the inks mix on top of each other transparently like a watercolor painting. So if you were to put down a wash of one color and then a, a wash of another color on top of that, they would mix together and make all these additional colors. That's awesome. Jason, you Just clearly... a lot of color theory. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, you love your craft, you understand it, and your work is so striking. Thank you, thank it's you. It's so great to see you here in New York Thank Comic you very Con. much. And your work is available online as well? It is, uh, jasonedmiston.com. Awesome, it's great to see you, Jason. Thank you very much for your time.